Okay, I'm going to talk about how to make a dungeon map for role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons um, using Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop 6. I'm probably going to break this up into a couple different tutorials because there's a lot to cover in 10 minutes. Um, so, I guess first thing I want to cover is these characters. It's You can get little sprites off the internet or draw your own or whatever and to represent the characters that you want on your map. These can be monsters if you don't want to put your players on, the, on there or whatever, or you can just leave this out altogether. Uh, the reason I'm mentioning it is because I need to know scale. And so these are my characters here. Um, what I like to do is over here in the Layers Management window, I like to click this little folder button and it brings up a new set folder. Um, I name it using Layer Set Properties and I'll name it Characters. Okay. And then I'll, in that folder, I'll put all these layers, each layer with a separate character. In fact, I forgot to name that one. So he looks like a little halfling. So I'm going to name him a little halfling. Halfling. There. This way I can keep track of them. And I have a little gray background here just so I can see the way they look. But each character is actually cut out. So um, they can fit on anything, which is kind of the point. They're like little, um, think of them as little miniatures. So, I save that, and I'll use this for later. Now this is, I'm going to do a, a dungeon similar to this. Um, I guess first thing I should cover on these characters that I forgot to mention is that the reason is scale. I need to know the image size, because they're it's tall, so the height of these characters is 50 pixels. So I'm going to say, okay, great, 50 pixels is about 6 feet, right, or 5 feet tall, however they, tall they are. Uh, it's a five. I'm just gonna say it's five feet. Call it good. So I'm gonna do a. I need to set up a grid for my map. So the first thing I want to do is I know I know my scale now. So I it's gonna be a, a five feet is 50 pixels. So I make a new document <coughs> for, at 50 pixels. I'm gonna basically draw one of my boxes for my grid, and then I'll repeat it later. So here's my 50 new 50 pixel document. I'm going to select all, edit, stroke. I want one pixel, a black grid. I want it inside or centered. And it'll draw a line. I think, I think it did it. Yeah. And draw a line. Drew, draw a line? Drew a line around. Okay, I'm going to deselect. I'm going to edit, define pattern. I'm going to call this 50 pixel grid or box or whatever. Okay, I don't need to save this anymore. Now I'm going to make my new document. This is going to be my main map. It can be as big as you want. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to keep it pretty small. Um, normally I usually go about a thousand pixels. I like to post these on the internet so because um, I do a lot of gaming via email and online. So I don't want to make them enormous. If I was doing this tabletop uh, and, I'm, and I had a laptop where I could afford to have a large file, it might be nice because the bigger maps can incorporate more detail. Uh, but for this tutorial, I'm going to do 500 pixels by 500 pixels. And there it is. So I'm going to paint my grid first thing. So I'm going to do my paint bucket. I'm going to do foreground, pattern. I'm going to select. Where is it? 50 pixel grid. And fill it. And there's my grid. I could have also gone in here to the layer properties, the layer special effects, and done a pattern overlay and also selected the same pattern. Uh, doing it that way, I could control the scale of the grid. Um, but then you have to have it on some sort of background because it doesn't just pattern overlay over, over only overlays what you've painted so you'd have to have a white background and it can become a little tedious. I think it's a cleaner and better image to do it the way I just did it uh, using just a straight up pattern. There's a lot of different ways to use this pattern to make a grid. Uh, this is the one I'm going to choose for this tutorial. So I'm going to name this layer grid. I'm going to make a new layer underneath it. The grid's always going to be on top. And I'm going to... I kind of want some sort of parchment look. So just you could either 
make one, spend a lot of time, and, and then open it and paste it in here. You can get them off the internet. If you want something quickie, which is what this whole thing is about, you can just go and choose like some paper looking colors, burnt kind of whatever, like that maybe. Filter, render, clouds. It kind of gives you this parchmenty look. Um, and then I kind of like to go through, and I usually do everything in layers and then merge them later. So I make a new layer above that. I turn off my grid for now. I'm going to reset this using this little button to black and white. These brushes, these calligraphy brushes, I think they're kind of handy for making raggedy edges. You just use a different uh, thing. So, like, I'll show you. I'll zoom out here. And I'll just paint a raggedy edge. Not doing quite so good. And the more time you take, obviously, the better it might look. You know, but I'm just is just this is just for flavor. This isn't really. I just want to show you how easy it is to do quick things that can really spice up a map and make it look make it look pretty sharp with very minimal effort. I could have just selected the other brush instead of doing that, but uh, you know whatever. Okay. And I'm just painting this. This is its own layer, so if I don't like the way this edge looks, I can delete it. That's why I do things in layers. Um, and you can sit here and tweak this thing forever. Uh, really, there's no end of things you could do. I can make another layer, and I can make like some sort of weird stain thing. You know, you do that. You could put it a glow on it, outer glow, sides. Let's make it. You know, I can play with this stuff ad nauseum to make stains or whatever. Um, you know, I can just do weird things. <clears throat> so, what I like to do is something like that, and then I'll I link. This is a trick I'd like to do to just com compress all the layers together. Is I link them because it's you can just click on the box and it makes this little thing wherever your paintbrush is is the layer you, it's linking with and then if I hit control E or you go up to layer and it's it's in layer I always just do control E merge linked and it'll drop them all to, as one layer it's kind of a handy way to get rid of all the effects and combine everything pretty much the way it looks um, so there's my parchment background oh I forgot the black do that and my grid so there's kind of my basic setup. From here, I can make my map. Um, I think I'm going to cover the basics of that in the next tutorial. But I want to tell you what I'm going to do in this one, so you don't have to watch both of them. Basically, what I do is I draw a marquee of of my uh, dungeon layout. And then I use the stroke command to draw a line around the marquee. And then I use bevel and emboss and, and various effects on the layer that I just did the stroke command on to make the walls beveled and embossed and look look like walls. Um, and I also do a floor layer underneath the walls and that's about it. Uh, from there you can just sit there and tweak it, add doors, add all kinds of doohickeys and labels and whatever. Uh, I'll get into that on the next tutorial. So that that's how you set up your, your basic background and your characters. You'll need these for the next part.